Thank you for tuning in to NSUSpartans.com and our weekly football coaches show here with Norfolk State football coach Pete Adrian as we recap last week's victory over Howard University and look forward to this coming week's matchup against Charleston Southern. And coach, uh, it wasn't always smooth sailing, wasn't always pretty, but at the end of the day you came out with a hard fought victory Saturday in your conference opener against Howard 23-9. I know you were happy with the end result. Oh, no question about it. I mean, uh, when I talked to the team at the beginning of the season, this could be a real trap game for us. Uh, First conference game on the road, new coaching staff. Uh, you know, Howard gave us a difficult game the year before, and you got to go back up there and play. It's always kind of tough to play there. And uh, we played a solid ball game. I mean, we shot ourselves in the foot uh, with all the penalties we had in the game. We just can't have 16 penalties in a ball game, and that's something that would, uh, has to be rectified by our part and will be. Uh, but overall, I was pretty pleased because uh, the defense uh, played very well and, and got out of some tough situations. Our offense. Uh, was consistently moving the ball if we didn't have a penalty. Uh, the thing I think we got to do now, we got to start scoring touchdowns instead of field goals in the red zone, and, and uh, hopefully that will come in the near future. You look at the start to the football game, and Howard was energized right at the start. They marched 80 yards, scored a touchdown on a fourth and goal play, and, and had all the momentum there. What did you do defensively after that point to adjust and really contain Howard's offense from that point forward? Well, you know, we, we had a missed tackle in there, which was, which was a big play. Uh, we also had a penalty, which was a big play. And uh, when they got down to red zone, you know, we played pretty good defense the first three downs. And the fourth down, uh, you know, we got just beaten the coverage and, and man to man, which, uh, you know, we were kind of surprised, but that happens like that. Really, we didn't push any panic button. We didn't change anything from the game plan. Our kids just went out and executed. And, and like the kids said, said, Coach, you were right. They were right. And I said, Well, I knew they'd be ready to go. And, and I thought the defense after that played very solid. I mean, Howard wasn't able to put any drives against us. Um, the only running attack they really had was the quarterback scrambling. Uh, when uh, we drop back the pass, and you know that kid's pretty good running, but uh, you know when you got a quarterback that's going to take up run all the time, it's tough to run an offense, and, and I think that showed uh, with Howard like that. Uh, and then I, I was real pleased to stop them four times on fourth down when they went for it. Those are all big plays, and, and those are what I call game changers when you can do that on fourth down. So the defense played really solid. Uh, offense, the second half moved the ball very well, and uh, you know I think we ran about 35 to 40 plays in the second half. And really, the only time we got stopped there was through a penalty. So that's, we have already met with our players and, and uh, actually showed them the film of what every penalty we had in that ball game and tried to explain to them that you know we can't afford to go from third and two to third and 21 because of a penalty. And that happened to us a couple of times. And that was a tough place. You mentioned the, the penalties. Obviously, you had a 19 at West Virginia and 16 against Howard. And, and obviously, I'm sure it was em emphasis for you last week in practice after West Virginia. And obviously, you guys are coaching your your kids to focus and have composure. What else can you do to try to help them understand and help them eliminate those mistakes moving forward? Well, you know, the, the, the thing is, it's just concentration. You know, a couple of times, and we always said this, uh, you know, football's a rough physical game. And the guys on the other teams are going to push you sometimes, and that's what happened. Guys push, you know, and, and talk a little bit, and then you're going to push them back. Well, the, the second guy always gets caught, and, and that's where the discipline comes in. You know, you can't, re you can't retaliate. When someone does that to you for the simple reason the officials usually don't see the first one but they always see the second one and uh, you know we jumped off sides a couple of times which is a no-no uh, we, we went in motion several times offensively which is another no-no uh, you know pass interference is a judgment call that's that's going to happen now and then you, you really can't say a whole lot about that but uh, we had a couple of strange penalties too batting the ball and the punt was uh, one that's very seldom ever called and, and uh, you know that that was called and so you kind of let that one just go by because that's a once, you know, every season type of call like that. But the biggest thing is just concentration and realize that, uh, you know, you got to stay focused every play and you can't lose it. Looking at, at some of the turning points of the game, um, obviously you had two takeaways uh, in in your own territory um, in the first half, the interception by Amici and Iago, and then a forced fumble that Joey Christine uh, Forrest and Corn Hammond was right there to scoop up. Those those were real big momentum killing plays for Howard and, and really helped your, your team maintain that lead heading into the second half. Yeah, and that's you know, and, and those are the plays if you're going to be a good football team, your defense has to make because uh, you know ne not every game just going to go smooth according to the script. You know, I mean the other team practices, the other team has coaches, the other team has scholarships, the whole nine yards, and they're going to they're going to play hard and be able to come up with those turnovers. I I thought Amici's turnover was really huge because. Uh, you know, it was right before the halftime. We had to lead. Uh, we had the problem with the penalty, not moving the, moving the sticks. I think it was at that time, and and, uh, and to, for him to pick it off. And they were trying to throw the ball over the middle. He did a good job in his, in his drop, and uh, really made a, a big play. Uh, then, of course, uh, uh, 
with Corn Hammond and Joey right there, you know, Corn was just called for a personal foul uh, on third and 14 when the quarterback scrambled and he went and hit the quarterback. And unfortunately, uh, you know, he was a hustle play, Corn's going to hit you. Uh, you know, he went through the kid and the kid ducked his head as Corn was coming and Corn hit him in the helmet. And that's kind of a tough call because you got to make the tackle. His intention wasn't to hit him in the helmet, but that happened, and that's the correct call to play. But I know that's a gray area uh, by all coaches feeling, what are you supposed to do? Because I don't know if the quarterback's going to duck or not, you know, but that happened. And then so that gave him a first down, which gave him momentum in the very next play. You know, uh, we had him scrambling there, and Joey made the big hit and it bounced the corner. He caught it in midair, and, and uh, so we got out of that. And second half, the big moment I'm changing play. I thought uh, your team up 13-9, the screen pass to Keith Johnson. Uh, you got a deep receiving core this year, so uh, Keith hasn't had a lot of touches early in the season, but he made the most of the one he had, taking it 44 yards for a touchdown in the third quarter. Well, he's a true freshman, you know, he has excellent speed. We know that. He's a track kid and just learning how to play. And uh, yeah, it was a big play with him. I mean, I think our receiving course is getting better each week, which is a good thing. And, and again, they're getting more experience. And again, the young kids that played last year are playing much better this year because they've played. And, and uh, you know, I think that's going to be one of the strengths of our team as we go through the season. And looking at um, the weekly MEAC awards, you did pick up uh, one this week. Your junior offensive lineman, Blake Matthews, was named MEAC Offensive Lineman of the Week. Uh, tell me a little bit, if you could, about, about Blake's performance. Obviously, he's in his first year as a starter and is uh, starting to come into his own now on the, on the offensive line. Well, he's really a, a very solid player. He's really a tough player, I mean, mentally and physically, you know. And uh, very good student, you know, 3.0 student. But uh, he's one of those guys you hate to play across because he's a very physical player. and. Uh, doesn't say a whole lot, just gets after you. And he had an outstanding ball game. Uh, again, uh, a lot of the runs were over top of him. He did a great job of pass protection for us. And, and again, he's a redshirt junior, which means he's a senior in the classroom. So he's been around, but he's taken and making the most out of uh, the starts, and we're real pleased with that. He had a really good spring, so really the way he's playing, we kind of expected him to play that way. All right, Coach. Well, as we turn the page this week now, you're 2 and 1 on the season, 1 0 in the conference. Step outside the MEAC for your last non-conference game of the season this week at Charleston Southern. First time ever playing Charleston Southern. What do you see from them on, on film? Well, they're uh, multiple offense. I mean, it's what we've been seeing the first three weeks. You know, they have a very athletic quarterback that tries to run. In fact, uh, this past week against Jacksonville, he ran 27 times for 163 yards. And, uh, you know, they lost to Jacksonville 37-30, but it went right down to the last play of the game. Uh, you know, big offensive line. Uh, Big tailbacks, defenses, uh, got nice size and, and very aggressive. So it's going to be a typical, uh, you know, tough ball game for us. Uh, hopefully, we represent the conference well and get us an out of conference win. Um, you know, they're 0 and 3 right now, but they played Central Florida at Central Florida. They played Florida State at Florida State, and they played Jacksonville at Jacksonville. So uh, uh, you know, the Central Florida and, and Florida State would be an outcome probably any any one double A team play. You're going to be 0 and 2. And Jacksonville went down to the wire, so I know they'll be excited about playing at home. And of course, that's a long trip for us to go down there, but uh, it'll be exciting. Our kids will be ready to play and, and uh, try to get after them. What would you say would be a couple of uh, your keys to, to victory this week for Norfolk State on the road in Charleston this Saturday? Well, the first thing is penalties. You know, I mean, really, I mean, that's that's a major issue right now, and, and uh, you know, we've got to go down and, and make sure that we don't get the stupid penalties. I mean, you're going to get five to seven penalties a game on the average, but you certainly can't be in those double digits, and we've never have been, and this is unusual for us, so we've got to make sure that uh, that's a big thing. And it's like any any game, I mean, we can't give them a big play on on, uh, on defense, and of course offensively, you know, you want to get out there and score, because uh, with the defense we have, if we get up two scores, we're pretty tough to come back against. All right, Coach, well, we wish you good luck this week at Charleston Southern, looking for uh, the first three and one start for the program since 07. As, uh, and then we'll talk to you again next week as you get ready to open up or, or continue MEAC play at home against South Carolina State next Saturday. And uh, we hope all Spartan fans can make it to Charleston, South Carolina this Saturday. Kickoff is 1.30 p.m. at Buccaneer Stadium. If you can't make it out, make sure to listen to the action on 102.1 FM and 1490 AM the game, and also 91.1 .1 FM in the Hampton Roads area. Or NSUSpartans.com will have the live audio stream for you, and the game will be televised on the Big South Network. That's uh, internet only, so be sure to check out the Charleston Southern and Big South uh, conference websites as well. We look forward to seeing you next week right here on the NSUSpartans.com football coaches show.